probably heard of it when a small change leads to large differences. If you were like me and when you were younger, you used to watch The Amazing World of Gumball, which is actually a really good show, then you would know that there was an episode on this term. But why is it called that? Well, in 1963, Edward Lorenz stated in his study that one flap of a seagull's wings would be enough to alter the course of the weather forever. But what does it mean? For this, you're going to need to know particle theory. When a seagull flaps its wings, it moves air particles. And those air particles move the air particles after that. And it just keeps on going and going and going while the bird is still flapping its wings. And that could potentially end up with a hurricane. But that's not actually going to happen, right? But these small events, like the bird flapping its wings, can serve as catalysts or stimuli that act on starting conditions. Now, you're probably wondering why am I talking about seagulls when it's called the butterfly effect, right? Well, in later speeches, Lorenz decided to use butterflies instead of seagulls to make his idea more poetic. Yeah, what better than to prove your ideas poetically? But like all scientists, his ideas were trashed originally. But now, people use them all the time, especially scientists and probably you and I, too. But for example, I, I can give you an example right now. TEDx was reintroduced in Uptown, like it does every single year. Now the thought process begins. If I hadn't signed up for TED, then I probably wouldn't have been stressing out a while ago. I wouldn't have spent the past few weeks writing and working on my speech. And I probably wouldn't be standing on the stage to today and facing my stage fright. But yeah, and much more. The butterfly effect can help us think of billions of different possibilities. And every single action we do can lead to something else. Now that we got the butterfly effect out of the way, let's actually begin what my speech is about, which is health wisdom and how it relates to the effect. You probably won't believe me when I tell you I was originally going to write about video games, but I don't know what happened there. I'm assuming you've heard of health wisdom, but then again, I'm assuming a lot. If this doesn't sound familiar to you, then you've probably heard people telling you to like eat properly, sleep on time, or like, you know, the usual, what they teach you in PE. If you haven't heard of that again, I'm not sure what's going on. But anyways, we have three main kinds of wisdom, other than obviously school and academics. It might alter a bit for everyone, but basically, the three kinds of wisdom are family wisdom, financial wisdom, and health wisdom. Unfortunately, health wisdom is the least talked about out of all of these intelligences and wisdoms. But don't worry, if you don't know much about it, it's got nothing to do with your academic intelligence or anything else, actually. Health wisdom is when you talk about taking care of yourself and all these actions which help you change your mindset and your behaviors. We usually talk about health wisdom when you go to the doctor and the doctor asks you if you've taken care of yourself, if you're sleeping on time, even if it's about your mental health. I won't be talking about mental health that much because I'm going to be focusing on physical, but mental health also counts in health wisdom. And health wisdom is everywhere. It helps you do a lot of things. It helps you change your mindset, your behavior, and it usually involves a promise to yourself or a pledge that you will help yourself out. But don't worry, it's not supposed to stress you out. We are currently living in an era of an acute disease pandemic, AKA the coronavirus, which is widely documented every single minute and actually even every single second. But chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and heart disease lurk in the shadows, killing over millions of people around the world. Despite having access to the best technology right now and a pretty decent healthcare system, we are still struggling in changing the outcomes of all of these lifestyle diseases significantly in the last two decades, 20 years, wow. You're probably wondering why. Though the understanding and treatment of lifestyle-related diseases have evolved remarkably over time, the mindset of us people has not changed significantly. We all know, I'm guessing, that if you, uh, if you don't apply something even though you know it, it's practically useless because like, you need to apply it and that only will show progress or any outcomes. Our knowledge is power only if we use it properly. Now you're probably also wondering, how does health wisdom link to the butterfly effect? Multiple different ways actually. Here's one example. If you want to close your eyes, you can do that. So you're stuck at home. You're under quarantine and you don't have a choice but to adapt around your home surroundings. As you aren't allowed to go out to the gym, go swimming, or even just out for a jog, your only source of physical exercise are workout videos, resources on online, and your yoga mats. But if you have a home gym, lucky. 
you have two choices, exercise or sit around. What do you choose? So you chose exercise. You exercise. It doesn't al only have to be exercise. It can also be like eating healthily and sleeping on time. The power of YouTube videos and yoga mats has finally got to you, and you have therefore begun. You eat healthily as well, and each and every day you get fitter and fitter until you can imagine. And even if you didn't end up like a supermodel, your body is still pretty happy. All of these days you spend taking care of yourself, even under a stressful situation around the world, paid off. And you can feel pretty good that you didn't end up like this. You chose to sit around. You probably thought, what's the point? You know, it's going to be over in a few weeks. So you sit around, stacking up on food, choosing not to exercise. You probably thought that nothing's going to happen at all. And after a while, you realize that you were pretty wrong, like really wrong. Now you haven't realized that your muscles have weakened. You're out of shape, unless you probably have a high metabolism. But still, that's not supposed to change anything. And you're now prone to countless syndromes and diseases. Well. That was just a simple example. Doctors can think of over millions of examples to tell you right now. But yeah, as you can see, choices, choices, and choices, which also links to the butterfly effect again. Every single action you take changes the impact. You didn't exercise for a day. You had a cheat day. You didn't sleep on time for once. That's OK. It just slows down your process a bit. Now, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not telling you to go and work out right now or go and take a nap if you haven't already. But what I am saying is by thinking mindfully, you can make a massive difference to your lifestyle, although obviously it does take time. Your choices can help prevent and procrastinate diseases, which may be genetic, like diabetes. When I say procrastinate, I don't mean like procrastinate on your schoolwork. You shouldn't be doing that. But I mean that you push it back and prevent it for as long as you can. Or as my doctor mom says, the only time where procrastination is actually good. How and what do I mean? Did you know that briskly walking for an hour every single day can actually reduce the risk of diabetes by 60%, which is a pretty big number when it comes to healthcare. By doing exercise, eating healthy, and sleeping on time, and also taking care of your mental health, your cells get stronger and gradually become less prone to diseases. So unless you want to get ill before you turn 40, I suggest you start taking care of yourself if you haven't already. Now, this should be the perfect time for me to spew out inspirational stuff, right? We're three-fourths into the speech. I've told you about the butterfly effect and everything. And you're probably waiting for something positive right now. Two of the most important traits governing our lives in each area are a positive attitude and a progressive mindset. There was also one more, but we're focusing on these two for now. If you're not a fan of positive attitudes, that's all right. You can't be happy all the time because... Everyone has their bad days. But sometimes being positive can help you through dark times or even help you overcome slumps. Your attitude and your progressive mindset help you to keep on going and are pretty useful when you take care of yourself. I'm using a lot of examples, but here's another one. People usually find it easy to motivate themselves when it comes to, when it comes to rewarding themselves and even for other people. Rewards, when I talk about rewards, I talk of stuff like food, free time, a gift, and much more. I think for me it would be free time, but I don't know about you. People also think of the future when they want to motivate themselves. Like when they think that if they study well, then they'll probably get good grades on their exam, they'll go to university of their choice, and they'll just have the life they want in general. These small motivations can help us to keep on going and are based on optimistic thinking, aka your positive attitude, and a progressive mindset. We usually use these for our education, career growth, and finance, but we forget to use them for our very own health. We have all gone through peer pressure, it's true, everyone has, in making sure we have cool things, but we don't get any peer pressure in maintaining our own health. We also have thousands of excuses in celebrating occasions with bad food and avoiding exercise. Yes, I am guilty when it comes to family gatherings. I think everyone can relate right now at some point. Most families have enough discussion to talk about the other two kinds of wisdom I talked before, family and financial, and also academics. But healthcare is barely talked about. This usually leads to people getting diseases by the time they're 30 to 45 years old, even before and even after. And then their productivity goes down. You don't really get much done, do you? So by taking care of yourself, as I said before, you can avoid these diseases and maybe get a few years without a constant pressure of becoming sick. So you got the idea. It doesn't matter what you do in your life or how you choose to take care of yourself, but whatever you do, remember that your health is pretty important and having bad health is not going to help you in your job, your family, or anywhere anytime soon. You have been taught a lot in school, or you may still be learning. We have PE lessons, they're really good. And you have the entire internet to help you out. 
And if you're lonely, why don't you call your family and friends to exercise with you? Or like, take group diets, do it together. Over calls and socially distanced, of course. And you never know, you might just happen to find videos of cats and dogs exercising on the internet. Thank you.